Hey guys, Get Level here, and today I'm gonna show you how I made this. Alexa, turn on ring light. Now, if you've been following me on Instagram for the past three or four weeks, you've seen me work on this. I've been updating everyone on like the progress of the project and you saw how much I struggled to make this. This is not going to be a step-by-step -step tutorial. I'm not gonna explain everything. I'm basically gonna show you the B-roll of the of, of the project and then I'm gonna talk over it basically. The reason why I don't wanna make this a step-by-step -step tutorial is because I have a pretty young audience, I believe, and uh, we're dealing with electricity here, okay? We're dealing with dangerous stuff we're dealing with heat with light with electricity i don't want you guys to go on and try to play with those things if you are not trained so before we start go follow me on instagram because every time i'm doing a diy project it will most likely be there that i'm updating you on my instagram stories so check me out on instagram but without further ado let's uh get right into it let me show you what i made all right so i started with a mdf 60 by 60 this is the light sockets and this is a wi-fi dimmer led dimmer but it also works for incandescent light bulbs uh, those are gu10 led light bulbs so i really did not want to go with incandescent because well incandescent gets really really hot and um an led is the best option for power consumption Okay, so right here, I'm going to start tracing my circle. So I don't have a compass, so I had to improvise one with a nail and a string and my pencil at the other end of the string. Okay, that's the inner circle. And then, since it's 10 specific, since it's specifically 10 light bulbs, I needed to have a pentagon inside of my circle. I forgot my geometry class lesson, so I had to Google it, and then I found I found out how to do it. Okay, this is where I bust out the jigsaw. I'm always scared of using the jigsaw. Like I'm, I don't, <laughs> I don't have a lot of experience using a jigsaw, but I did a pretty good job. And yes, this was all done in the middle of my apartment, in the living room. That is where I'm spraying all of that MDF dust. So MDF dust apparently is not really good for you. So I'm wearing a mask, I'm wearing uh, goggles and everything. I also have eye allergies, so it really doesn't help when it comes to dust. So you can see me sending to smooth out the shapes. Okay, now I have like the specific drill bit. That was 2.8 uh, millimeters wide which is the exact size of the light bulb so sockets, as you can see. The thing here, I still didn't figure out how I was gonna mount those, okay? In my head, I was like, oh, I'll just put some hot glue, mount those. But I didn't realize there will be a, like a certain distance between the socket and the actual top of the light bulb. And I don't want the ring light to be super thick. So after sending it one more time, swiping it down, it was time to paint. I've always heard that MDF was hard to paint. I did not struggle at all, honestly. Like I did two coats, I believe, and then it was fine. Okay, so here's what I was talking about. That distance, I had to cover it somehow. But in the meantime, I was gonna do the, the wiring, which is not my favorite part at all. At this point, I think we're already at day three or day four. So I have everything, I have the main power going to the dimmer and then the dimmer going to the lights. And as you can see here, the Wi-Fi dimmer works really well. Now this Wi-Fi dimmer was actually pretty cheap. It was less than 20 bucks and it is actually compatible with all your smart home devices like, like um, the Amazon Echo and the Google Home or anything else. It uses the Smart Life app, so if you have any other devices that use the Smart App Life, you can also control it from there. That means that I can turn it on and, and dim it from anywhere in the world. But stay tuned because there is an issue with the Wi-Fi dimmer <laughs> at the end that you're actually not going to see in this video. But like right now, I'm not running it. 
Okay, so I had I decided to print some separators for the for the light bulbs basically between the light sockets and the light bulbs in order to hold them in place it would just be a 3d printed separator i ran a bunch of tests first to test the heat and where the heat was coming from and those light bulbs actually have a little bit of a vent i know that leds don't really produce that much heat but they they, they do <laughs> they still do and it was completely fine so i did not need to use glue or anything it's just like the separators would hold them in place. Here I am printing, I designed and then printed the the mount basically, how, how the ring light would have to mount onto a light stand or a regular tripod. And this is what I came up with. It's actually really, really small. I thought it would be bigger, but I, I clearly did not measure enough. And it was completely fine. Those two holes are for screwing it into the board, but I also hot glued it into the board. And as you can see, it fit perfectly. So that was a one one try and it was all good. It's still very small. I'm still impressed of how sturdy it is considering how small it is. I hope it will not fail in the future. You can see me putting it on my light stand there. Okay, the dimmer on the side. And boom, and here you can see the separator. And that's it. That's the only thing holding the light bulb in. And it's snug and it's perfect. Even though I had to redesign it three different times. Here you see me printing some more separators, but this time for the diffusion, because this is very harsh light and we want the light to be um, pleasing to the eye in a certain way. You don't want to burn your eyeballs. You need that light to be not only soft for, for your eyeballs, but also for your face, because it is supposed to be a beauty light and uh, we want those soft shadows. So I printed like 20 separators. There's two of them that are extra. And then I bought this tablecloth. I think it cost me like one euro or something. And now I had to just cut it and then use it as a diffuser. Put it on top of the separator and then boom. I um, doubled the layers, which I don't know if it was a good idea or not because it it's actually more opaque than I, than I realized it would be. And it has this kind of texture. I honestly, I kind of like the texture on the paper. It, it makes it feel less paper, but it's still a horrible material to work with. I do not recommend using that material at all. If you can use like cloth or I actually used the uh, shower curtains before, but I didn't want to cut them up. As you can see, it's very. Um, it folds easily. So here you'll see me putting double-sided tape that's how i will hold the diffusion paper i'm always trying to make it so that if i want to move something i can do it easily basically nothing is final everything is an option okay here i'm cutting this part because there was a with a weird bend But I didn't realize that when the lights would turn on, you would see me basically uh, at like layering the paper at the bottom. You can see it there, I think. You see that mark in the middle there? Uh, but I went on and, and cut more of the paper and fixed it later on. And there I had it. As you can see here, everything was working really well. Um, no issues with the dimmer. Um, okay, the, <laughs> the wiring is not the best. Um, this is really why I don't really recommend doing this at home, especially if you're underage. Uh, this is very, very dangerous process. All it would take, there's a lot of exposed wires. So as you can see at the bottom here, I, I already cut the paper to make it look a little bit better. And of course, yeah, I can control it with my smartphone. I can control it with my voice. Uh, I can dim it with my voice. I can control it. I Well, I could dim it with my voice. That's when the dimmer was working. <laughs> But yeah, basically, this is the final product and this is where it's going to be. This is where it is right now, actually. Uh, but one thing to note is that the dimmer stopped working for some reason. I don't it seems to like still get power, so I'll probably fix it at some point. So I basically had to add a simple on off switch to it as you like as a 
as you would add to a normal lamp or, or something. So right now it's just on off. I can just turn it on and off. Lucky for me, I have a bunch of Wi-Fi switches. So they're not dimmers, they're just switches. So they will turn it on and off. I don't know what I've done with it until I can finally fix the dimmer. So overall, um, great experience working with MDF. I've always wanted to do that. Uh, it was it was pretty cool. It, it took me like two, three to four weeks, but uh, it was a good, I learned so much. Now, obviously this is not the cheapest option. I wanted mine to be fancy. I wanted a, a maximum amount of light. This is actually a total of 5,600 lumens when it comes to light okay in comparison for example uh an elgato key light will be like 2000 lumens and elgato key lights are super bright using mdf as a material probably not the cheapest but also like it's the most sturdy that i could find i don't really enjoy working with mdf but it's way sturdier than i expected it to be um everything that i 3d printed i know people are gonna be like oh buy a 3d printer step one uh no the those little parts that i made with a 3d printer you can make them out of wood if you want to so let's talk about let's talk about the uh, the price now. When it comes to the light bulbs, I bought two packs of six. Okay, each pack was about twenty euros. Why did I spend so much money on LED GU10 light bulbs? Now here's the thing: I bought those light bulbs specifically because they don't flicker. They're not supposed to flicker, right? But when I bought the Wi-Fi dimmer, which was 17 euros, it started introducing it to some flickering, right? So maybe the light bulbs themselves don't flicker, but the Wi-Fi dimmer was struggling with the with the voltage, the amperage. I don't know why, but it started flickering more and more and more until it stopped working. So I could have just added a normal on off switch from the get go and saved 17 euros. Really, I maybe even could have bought way, way cheaper a uh, light bulb so that's 20 bucks plus 20 bucks i paid around 40 bucks for the 10 light bulbs well 12 really uh, 17 bucks let's say 20 okay let's say 60 for the dimmer i paid 10 bucks for the mdf board so that's so that's 70 dollars uh 70 euros sorry and then uh what else i paid like one euro for the paper i'm not gonna put that in but let's if you want to like 71 what else the total cost since i already own a 3d printer of the filament was probably 40 cents so I don't think we need to count that. Oh, the light sockets. The light sockets were about nine euros for a pack of 10. Actually, it was seven euros. But anyways, the total is around 80 euros, which is coincidentally the same price as a ring light that I wanted to buy in the first place from the company Newer. I will be reaching out to them and see if they can send one to me so I can compare it to that one. But the thing is, it took me four weeks to make. There was a lot of like a lot of hard work my fingers still hurt from just doing the wiring it is still dangerous <laughs> in a certain way uh, it is in a controlled environment i'll be fine but this is why i don't recommend i wouldn't recommend you doing it my goal was to make a ring light that is big enough that it can stand one meter away from my camera turn off stream lights okay so this is what it looks like with just the ring light Okay, <laughs> so I, I'm pretty proud of the of the result. I have some glasses here if you want to see like a little bit of the reflection and what it looks like. It's huge. It's really big, and I don't I haven't found any ring lights that huge on uh, on Amazon, especially not for that price. So can you build one way cheaper? Yes, absolutely. I actually have another tutorial on how you can make a ring light out of foam board. You can buy way cheaper light bulbs. You can even go with incandescent as long as you don't catch things on fire um you can go with a cheaper material than mdf you can probably do it with reclaimed wood if you have a on off switch a normal on off switch uh, from the get-go that's even cheaper you can buy those for like a dollar if you don't even want to have a, a on off switch you can get that dollar off of the total cost and just plug it in and it lights up and i know that my channel i talk a lot about how to save money and stuff like that this is not one of those situations this is a situation where i needed that for my particular needs and since all of my lights are already uh reactive to voice control and stuff like that i wanted my ring light to also do the same i also wanted it to be huge i wanted to be I wanted it to be as bright as possible. I wanted the color, the white, to be as 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 neutral as possible, as as true to the color white as possible. And I wanted no flickering. And that's it. And that's it. Uh, <laughs> 
Check out my Twitter. I posted a whole lengthy thread about ring lights and their hues and why you would want a, a ring light and why you would not want a ring light. So check that out and um, and follow me on there while you're at it. OK, follow me on social media. I usually do content about live streamers, like how to make better content as a live streamer or a content creator in general. Hopefully you guys enjoyed that video. If you've seen multiple of my videos and you haven't subscribed yet, please, please just subscribe because you're going to miss out if you don't. <laughs> I will see you guys next time. So turn on stream lights. There we go. Go out there, make me proud. Guy level out.